Well, hey, good morning, and uh, welcome to uh, Lighthouse Community Church uh, Online. And uh, it's the first uh, Sunday of our church quarantine, and I pray, though, that uh, you're there, and I'm here, and we're not together, that we are together, you know, in united as the body of Christ, uh, together in spirit, and that God's, God will work beyond our circumstances uh, to accomplish His work and His will in us, even, even while we're remote. Um, before we begin, and today we're going to be talking about the promises of God. Uh, we need to hold on to promises, and we need to understand what promises God has given to us, and uh, what are promises, what aren't promises. Uh, but before we get there, I want to take some time, and I want us to pray. And uh, I would ask that at this point, um, that you would pause the video and, uh, we're, and take a look at uh, the things that are going to come up on your screen in just a moment uh, for us to pray for. Uh, so let's go before the Lord and uh, spend just a little bit of time praying and asking His blessing upon our time, uh, praying uh, that, uh, that we would trust Him and that we would trust His promises, um, praying uh, that, uh, that God would have mercy upon our nation and upon our world and He would bring this, uh, this pandemic to an end soon and that He would be merciful and pray that, uh, pray that He would grow us but also that he would grow the kingdom through the spread of the gospel during this time, that uh, we would have much fruitful ministry. So let's, uh, let's stop right now, and uh, let's uh, go before the Lord in prayer. Jesus, we do ask that you would have your hand of blessing upon our time. God, we do pray that you'd be merciful to our nation, that you'd bring this uh, this pandemic to a close, that you would, in your mercy, you would take care of this virus, God. Lord, I pray that we would grow in our faith, we would grow in our trust, in our clinging to you, God, during this time. Lord, I pray that we would, uh, that we would see many people come to know you as Savior as they turn to you rather than reject you in the midst of, of this struggle and this turmoil. We ask this in your name. Amen. Promises. They, they really are basic and foundational to life. We make promises to our spouses when we marry them. As parents, we make promises to our children. And it's, and it's the same thing in our relationship with God. What we believe in is what God has told us to be true. And we trust that. The Bible is a promise, really, essentially, that God is good. And that God's word, God can be taken at his word. He can be trusted. Faith and promise go hand in hand. We trust because God promised it was so. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4 says, For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world by lust. His precious and magnificent promises, they were given to us to save us. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Why do we hold on? Why are we called to remain, to remain faithful to God? Because the promise is he's faithful to us. That as we, as we go through life, and not just now, but throughout life, um, but especially now, we need to look to God and we need to cling to his promises so that we don't doubt, so that we don't waver. Uh, but one of the things I've seen and been seeing, and you may have noticed this as well, is that people are putting up a, a number of verses uh, that they're clinging to as promises. And we've got to make sure that we're understanding what those promises are and holding on to what's a real promise for us. Because if we claim a promise from God that He didn't make to us, it can lead to shipwreck of our faith. One of them that I've seen uh, bantered about uh, during this time is 2 Chronicles 7. Uh, verses 13 and 14, and it says that uh, if I shut up the heavens so that there's no rain, or I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now, we need to understand what is being promised and what isn't being promised there. There's, there's two parts of this. Uh, there is a there's a spiritual element of this, and there's a physical part of this. 
The physical part is tied directly to the nation of Israel. This was, this was given to Solomon. This was given to Israel. And the idea of healing the land was the fact that God's covenant with Israel was, was directly tied to their time in the promised land and how God would bless them for their obedience in the promised land. That's physical, and it's specific to them here on earth. That is not a promise that God has made to, to us here, here in Alaska, here in the United States, here in the world, to us. It's, there is no promise that if we humble ourselves, that God is going to heal America. That was specific to, specific to Israel. But more importantly than that is the promise that he did make. The promise is this. The spiritual was God's intimate relationship with his people, and the promise was to forgive sin. That if we humble ourselves before the Lord, that he will forgive us. And it's in the context that when difficult time comes, that we would turn, that, people, that God's people would turn to him, confess their sin, and more importantly than bringing healing to the United States, is the fact that he'd bring healing to our soul and that he would forgive us. That's the important promise that we need to remember that's really for us. God promises to forgive our sin. Another one that I've seen a lot of is found in Psalm 91, in verses 1 through 6. It talks, it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For it is He who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and bulwark. You will not be afraid of the terror by night, or of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. And there's two keys there. And it's that he who delivers you, and you will not be afraid. Uh, to, be to be delivered, it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that it will never take hold of you. Uh, the promise of God is never that if you're faithful to God, you won't get sick, or that you won't catch a disease, or that pestilence won't touch you. It's the fact that God will deliver you, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get well. It's just that the worst that the earth can bring upon you, pestilence, destruction, uh, enemies, that you don't need to be afraid because God will deliver that God can be trusted to the very nth degree of your life, that you are safe in His hands. And that doesn't mean that you won't be touched by pestilence, you won't be touched by danger, but you'll be safe in the midst of it. And that is an incredible, incredible promise, that even as we're touched by these things, we don't need to be afraid because we're safely in the hand of God. Another promise that, that we need to hold on to is the promise from Paul in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It's, it's, and it's, and it's the, the very famous promise, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And it's important for us to understand what those all things are. And let, let me get the context. Philippians 4, 10 through 14, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at last you've revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means. I know how to live in prosperity. In every circumstance, I've learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well to share with me in my afflictions. What's assured? What's the promise? The promise is the ability to do all things. The question is, what's the all things? It's not that I can do something hard because God's going to strengthen me to do something impossible. No, the context here is it's contentment within all circumstances. We're assured of having the ability to be content and to find our satisfaction in life, in relationship with God, no matter what may come to us. Paul said whether it was humble means or in prosperity, that he was able to, he was able, whether he was suffering or in abundance, he was able to have joy. He was able to, to have kindness. And if we want to go back to, ex, to extend the context to verses 4 and 6, 
verses 4 through 6, that would include rejoicing in the midst of these sufferings, having showing kindness in the midst of the sufferings and the circumstances, and not being anxious no matter what comes. That's the promise. The promise is that we can be content, we can rejoice, and we can demonstrate Christ-like kindness in the midst of no matter whatever context God puts us in or we find ourselves. And then lastly, Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 30. Paul writes this, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to become conformed to the image of His Son, so that He be the firstborn among many brethren. And these whom He predestined, He also called. These whom He called, He also justified. And these whom He justified, He also glorified. So what is promised? What's promised is goodness. Goodness from God. The problem with that verse is we don't understand oftentimes what goodness is. We think of goodness as happiness. We think of, we think of goodness as what's comfortable, what's convenient, what's pain-free. But what is good? In the context of this verse, what's the good that God promises? The God, God promises to us conformity to the image of Jesus Christ. And also bringing us to glory. And it says that God causes all things to work together for good, God causes the events of our life to bring us in conformity to Jesus Christ. But also, it's what brings us to the point of being glorified, of, being, uh, of finding glory in God, and, 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 and the goodness that comes from being faithful to God is standing before Him glorified and receiving glory from God to us in honor of, of the, the, the life that we've lived and the good that He's produced within us. So as we go through these days, it's important that we cling to the promises of God. But let's cling, let's not cling to a false hope that God's going to restore some glory, restore some materialistic wonder and, and convenience and comfort into our lives. That may happen. God may restore the fortunes of our country. But that's not promised. What's promised is that He will forgive my sin and your sin. That He will work to goodness in us to make us like Jesus. Uh, that we can go to sleep at night at peace, safe, knowing that no matter what is going on, we're safe in the hands of God. And knowing that no matter where we find ourselves, we can, we can count it all joy. We can find contentment because of the work that God has done within us. Jesus, thank you. Help us to trust you. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for uh, worshiping with us a little bit this morning. Uh, here at uh, Lighthouse Community Church uh, online, and I pray that uh, you have been blessed by our time in the Word, and uh, if there's anything we can do for you, please uh, give us a shout out. You can uh, email us at, uh, email uh, me at uh, lccnikiski at gmail.com, and uh, you can also find us on Facebook. Send me a message, let me know how we can pray for you, how we can serve you, and we'll see you back here again soon.